On Law Weekly today, a quick look at the arrest of judges by the Department of State Services. We get dissenting views from senior advocates of Nigeria on the legality of the action of the DSS. And lawyers give their opinion on the fight against corruption. Are we getting it right? Welcome to Law Weekly. I'm Victoria Ido. In the early hours of Saturday morning, that's on the 8th of October, the operatives of the Department of State Services raided the homes of judicial officers in parts of the country, including Abuja and Port Harcourt. The DSS in a statement said seven judges were arrested in connection with the allegation of corruption and misconduct by the judicial officers, but again released them by Sunday the 9th on administrative bail. This action generated a lot of controversy from the Nigerian Bar Association, the Nigerian Judicial Council, lawmakers of the Senate and House of Representatives, and Nigerians. After an inconclusive two-day emergency meeting, the NJC, reviewing the raid by the DSS and some of its members, described it as a threat to the independence of the judiciary. The MBA, on the other hand, insists that the arrest and detention of the judges was unlawful and unconstitutional. The lawmakers set up an ad hoc committee to investigate what it termed the invasion of property and arrest of persons by the service since May 29, 2016. But then again, the federal government stated that the fight was not against the judiciary but against corruption. Here are some of the legal issues that have arisen as a result of some of these actions. Whether the DSS can lawfully arrest suspects if the offence borders on bribery and corruption or professional misconduct, or is it within the purview of the law that established them? Whether the DSS is permitted by law to carry out raids at about 1 a.m. on Saturday morning or dusk generally? And whether the DSS is permitted by law to break down doors and windows of the suspect's property? and whether the DSS should have given the judges some leverage because of their position in the country. Well, let's get some legal perspective to all of this. First, a professor of law, Issa Sage, says senior lawyers are to be blamed for the rot in the judicial system. The issue of lawfulness is not a problem at all. Obviously, it was lawful because there are only two categories of persons in this country who enjoy immunity from criminal prosecution or from searches, in fact, from criminal processes. The president, vice president, the governors, deputy governors, that's all. Every other Nigerian is totally subjected to the full criminal weight of our law. So, the situation had become an epidemic. As it and, I, and I don't think NJC is established and has the capacity to deal with an epidemic of these proportions. The NJC lacks the capability? It doesn't have the capacity at all. It's what? supposed to deal with a normal thing when two or three people have misconducted themselves and the whole process of appointing a committee to hear the petitions and then make recommendations, all those things, for normalcy, not to deal with an epidemic which was rocking, in fact, which was going to bring the whole country down. Because if you, 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 you shoot down, if you destroy democratic hopes that if a person goes into an election and the majority votes for him, he'll be declared a winner. Once you destroy that, we are aiming for civil war. We are aiming, people are going to get to power by guns rather than by votes. Thankfully, they've been released on their own self-recognition, which is very good. Well, as for the Nigerian Bar Association, they have no moral right to speak. It sounds very bad in their mouths to condemn and to criticize. Because in, uh, the members of the Nigerian Bar Association are the ones responsible for where we are today in judicial corruption and total corruption of our electoral system and uh, the whole uh, criminal administration system. 
Nigerian members of the Nigerian Bar Association, the senior ones, are the ones responsible for it. So it sounds very ill and very bad in the amount to begin to, 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 to protest and say things. They are the ones who carry billions of naira and millions of dollars to these poor judges. They are the ones who corrupted our judges. It's the lawyers who corrupted the judges. A senior lawyer, Babatunde Fashanu, speaks on whether the security agency is legally empowered to investigate issues of corruption and professional misconduct. You have the um, National Security Agency Act, which gives the DSS the power to um, act to prevent crimes against the state or any matter that has to do with crimes against the against state security. So the question is, if a judge is suspected to be corrupt, is that a matter that comes under that heading? So that's a matter for interpretation. Some people might say, no, if you are talking of state security or internal security of the country, you are talking of things like uh, acting against uh, Boko Haram kind of thing or terrorism and things like that. But if you look at a, a judge that is uh, suspected to be corrupt, and the judge might sit over an election matter and intentionally torpedoes the wishes of the voters, does that come under internal security? So I leave the answer to you. So you cannot just come out and say, oh, what they did doesn't come under internal security. So well, me personally, as for my opinion, I think corruption being endemic now, I think it will come under it. That is my own personal opinion. Okay, you say that they have the powers constitutionally to carry out this uh, search and this arrest, but the way it was done, the time it was done, could they not have done it at another time or at a better time? Well, personally, I believe that it shouldn't have been done that way. But that does not mean that if it was done that way, it was illegal. I think you're getting me. Why is because for you to go against judges, you are kind of impinging on their independence. And when you look at the Constitution, you see that the executive is there, the legislature, the judiciary is there. And it's the judiciary that acts as checks and balance against the other uh, two arms. So when you start moving against judges, it gives the impression that maybe the government is not happy with whatever judgments this judge is giving or that judge is giving. So that is why the government has to be very careful when they are moving against judges. But having said that, we all agree that corruption is rife in the judiciary and something has to be done. Earlier you talked about the section that gives them the powers to conduct such. Well, of course. Uh, there are provisions in the Administration of Criminal Justice Act that allow uh, security agencies or police to effect a warrant at any time. In as much as they might have the power, they have to be careful when you are talking of judges. You just don't go and be breaking down judges' uh, houses. But everybody is equal before the law. Everybody is equal, but I dare say that some people are more equal than others. That's what it shows. Why? It's because of the constitutional protection of judges. Judges have no immunity. It's only the president and the vice president, uh, the governors and the deputy governors that have immunity. The legislature, they don't have immunity. The judiciary don't have immunity. But because of the independence of the judiciary, and the importance of the judiciary in the Constitution. 
and the role that they play. It should, it, I don't think it's uh, either politically, socially, or legally permitted. Even though it might be legally, uh, it might be legal, but it shouldn't have been done that way because okay. of the position of the, of the judiciary. How else could it have been done? For instance, could the NGC have been involved? No matter how much they give a judge, if he is very corrupt, he's still going to be corrupt. So we are in the system. And you see a judge that you knew, maybe it was a colleague or somebody that you knew in practice, and he was struggling in practice. And he wasn't born into a very rich home. I mean, as in, he didn't get a legacy of uh, 100 million. And we know what he earns. And he's buying a property of 300 million. I mean, that is immediately uh, evidence of corruption. That, that's, where is he getting the money from? So those kind of people ought to be investigated. But to do that investigation, the NGC has to be involved. That is my own take on it. So that it doesn't appear as if uh, the judiciary is being crowded, especially in, the, uh, in our climes. Judges can be arrested, even in America, that we copy from their democracy. Judges are arrested now and then and prosecuted. There, there will be sting operations and all that, but I think if you want to do a sting operation on a judge, it is not proper not to involve the NJC that is in charge of discipline of judges. Overall, the fight against corruption, are we getting it right? I think they are doing well. At least in our lifetime, we can see something being done. Yeah. You see, when I was a, a little boy in Lagos, in Lagos Island, if a magistrate was coming, walking towards you, you would go to the other side of the road. That was how much we kept them in awe, not to talk of a high court judge. But nowadays, magistrate. Yeah, because it has become like a norm that magistrate. If I have case before magistrate, I know what to do. Many judges are honest. Many judges are diligent, many judges are dedicated to the job. And you see, when bad judges are put to book, it also goes a long way to assist the good judges so that we don't have that uh, impression that it's all judges in Nigeria that are corrupt. Let us try and weed out the bad ones because we are talking of the judiciary being the last hope of the common man. And you are not free to go there because you know the other side will buy justice. And it's a common thing, especially if you don't have money to, to, to do the same. So a dire situation requires dire solution. Let there be more sting operations. I always said that. People don't listen to me. But how does it happen? Don't just go and raid judges' houses get the NJC involved. It doesn't even have to be the whole members of the NJC because the security agencies might want a lot of secrecy. So like in the NJC, they could appoint an intelligence panel there, comprising of maybe the CJN and maybe two others that will, will be the people that we only know, and, uh, you know about what, but they need to cooperate with the NGC. That is what will make for uh, kind of a respect for the judiciary and the separation of powers. Coming up after the break, we get a different perspectives to all of this from a senior advocate of Nigeria, Norris Quaker. Stay with us.